Yes. So we are we are starting with the motor sound first. Yes. यशस्सुप्तेशु जाग्रति यशस्सुप्तेशु जाग्रति कामं 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 कामुशो कुशो निर्मिमाना निर्मिमाना अदेव शुक्रम अदेव शुक्रदम्म Hello. Hello. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I extend a warm welcome to all the participants who has joined with us for this event. Today is indeed a special day. We have with us not one but two eminent speakers for today's seminar. The best knowledge is said to be experience, and today we have C. A. Franklin sir, who will be sharing sharing with us his wisdom from his fifty illustrious years as a chartered accountant. and we look forward for learning from you sir welcome sir following which we will having a technical session on company audit by sri priya ma'am who is a former central council member of ica our biggest support the chairman of sikasa trivandrum ca ramrishan sir also has also joined with us today welcome sir okay handing over to gayatri Okay, thank you, Thomas, for the warm welcome. We all know it's no ordinary feat becoming a chartered accountant and completing fifty successful years in that profession is no cake walk. So next is Guru Vandanam to C. A. Franklin sir on celebrating his fifty golden years as a chartered accountant. Yeah, very clear. Now it's clear. Now, now I request the students assembled at the Nagar Kovil office of Frank Rinsaw to honor him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, all the students. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the love and affection you have shown and the honor you have given to me. Thank you. Now, uh, now, Gayatri Franklin sir yeah. will give a uh, okay, sir, 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 blessing speech for the students. You can announce. A great thing. So it's a great thing I to invite... be a chartered accountant. Uh, this fifty years is only a passage of time. The difficult thing is passing the exam. So once you pass, and if your God has given the life, it continues. and if you are in the profession you are achieving 50 years so it is 50 years is only a god's given gift only the passing your effort and also god's uh, grace should be there to pass otherwise however it is it's very difficult so i anyway, am uh, thankful to ramakrishnan for showing this love and affection and honoring me with the students students are the people who are going to become the future chartered accountants so it's a good thing that you shown thank you very much all the ramakrishna thank you so much sir it is obvious bearers it is obvious bearers of the sikasa who took the initiative i only just coordinated sir okay thank you all the office bearers of sikasa and all the students of the trivandrum because i was a student of trivandrum <laughs> so, thank you so much sir thank yeah. you so much for the inspiring words yeah on behalf of the sikasa fraternity we congratulate and you and i was on the special occasion of suryan ko Suryan Company articles. In those days, only four firms were in Trivandrum: Verma, Verma, 
Suri Angrachalayaran Kambanyan Potian Rao, I was with Suri Anko. And Sri Bhagavadishwaran, he is no more, two years back he passed away. And uh, Mr. Subbaya was there. At the end of my period only, he became a partner in Suryan Company. But when I joined, he was there as a qualified assistant. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Wish you many more years ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, very sir. much. And it is a lovely subject you have taken for today's topic, the amendment of the Companies Act 2021. Company it's very important. Whether it is effective from 1421, some things are effective from 1421 and some things are effective from 1422. So this year's balance sheet, what we had to do, Mr. Ramakrishnan, we had to show all these things. Yeah. That is Definitely. March 21. Yeah, that is Supriya yeah, Madam. Uh, yeah, Supriya Madam will uh, uh, yeah, explain it. Yeah. Explain it. Really good. She's an expert in the company level. And for all the students, studying is the only thing to pass the exam. You have to devote your all your timings for studies. Once you join, for CA, you have to forget all other things. And if you are putting an entire effort for passing, for studying, actually studying is important. Then only you are getting the knowledge, then automatically you will pass. Once you are thorough with the subject, you will definitely pass. And you have to put a lot of time and energy for this. Extra things, three years, keep it away. And full time uh, devotion to the studies will help you very much. Of course, you have to spend some time for all those things. But the more important, that is once you join, you should be through. That is it. my only advice is be, be sincere and dedicate for studies. If you are really serious, then only join for CA. You having joined, it is your duty and your, uh, your ambition is to become a CA, so you have to study. That's the only way. Nobody can put something on you, into your brain. You have to take it by from others inside you. By reading the books, it will transfer. Or by listening to the uh, lectures like Sri Priya's, Madam's, seminars, etc. And you will be getting some, so many things. So listen. The art of listening is a great thing. Listen properly, they will get a lot of points. Okay, sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, I invite the person of Sikasa Trivandrum, C. Ramakrishnan, to address you all. Secretary of the Trivandrum branch of the Sikasa, Thomas, chairperson, which is not present here, she uh, we had to congratulate her for having qualified the final round of the recognition competition of the Institute of Tatrakons of India, Southern India region. So I will congratulate her and I wish her all the best to uh, get the first prize and bring the honor to our branch, uh, Shamim, Shamima. Shamim. And all of the students and the chair, chairman of our branch, Sri Ramesh Kumar, who, who has been very, very encouraging and instrumental in organizing this important seminar. This is the second seminar we are organizing after the examination. The first seminar was on the practical aspects of the, the new web portal that has been launched by the uh, Ministry of Finance. Uh, uh, so so we, are, we, are, we have been facing so many teething problem and uh, how to log into and how to file returns, how to uh, file uh, appeals and all those things were clearly explained by the SIRC um, uh, committee member, CA Abhishek Murali in a very lucid and very, very simple manner. And he also uh, answered the questions posed by the students and it was a very, very you know, useful session. And continuing on that aspect, next important uh, practical, uh, knowledge one should have is the audit of companies. We have different companies, as you know, Section 8 company, private limited company, public limited company, listed company, then the one man company called, uh, the, then the one man company, then we have the uh, limited partnership company, and we have to have different approaches for auditing of these companies. Now, the company SAC 2013 has been amended. So you should be equipped with the, uh, enough sound knowledge uh, about these amendments and to undertake the audit in a very efficient manner. So it, it, uh, so the members also, I'm sure, will welcome the initiative of the SIKASA in equipping the students in uh, so that they are put in a better manner, confident manner to take undertake the audit assignments you are giving to them. 
So, and with these few words, I am sure, I'm sure today's session handled by C.A. Sripriya ma'am, former Central Council member of the ICA and erudite chartered accountant, well versed in the uh, practical aspects of the Companies Act, uh, uh, bankruptcy court procedures and all those things. She will be giving a very, very important uh, um, uh, uh, knowledge, will be imparting a very, very important knowledge to you all. And I, uh, I request you, all of you, to use her uh, uh, skill and uh, gain, imp uh, gain practical knowledge out of her, uh, this uh, training session. I welcome CSE Cipri Priya Mom. And uh, now I hand over to Gayatri for the next uh, event of this next uh, uh, item on this program. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now I invite Chairman of ICA Trivandrum, CA Ramesh Kumar, sir, to speak a few words. Good morning. Uh, so I have some uh, issues with my connectivity, so I am not using the video. Okay. Uh, uh, respected uh, Chairman of SIKA uh, Trivandrum Program, CA Ramakrishna, sir. Uh, fellow co management committee members and uh, our respected, most respected faculty, sir. Uh, faculty of today's uh, uh, virtual seminar, CA Sripriya, madam, other office bearers of uh, Team Chikasa, and my dear students. A very good morning to all of you. At the outset, let me thank you, Team Chikasa, for inviting me uh, to this webinar. And I would like to congratulate the Team Chikasa for organizing, organizing this. Uh, webinar on company audit 2021, which is more appropriate now as the due date for the company audit is uh, fast approaching. Okay, but then uh, I don't want to get into the subject as we have an excellent faculty, uh, CA Sripriya Madam, who is also the, who was the Central Council member. Uh, she will explain to you, uh, and we are fortunate to have an experienced and enthusiastic Sikasa chairman, CA Ramushan sir under whose uh, leadership uh, we can organize uh, more programs. So we are the, we, the management committee is always with you, my dear students, so for your future endeavors as you are the future of this great profession. Uh, concentrate on your studies and all the very best uh, for uh, those who are going to appear the next attempt and uh, those who have already returned and uh, all the best for the result. So thank you once again for inviting me for this program. Uh, thank you, uh, Jai Hind, Jai ICA. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Without any further ado, I shall introduce today's speaker who completed her articles from Mrs. Price Waterhouse, Chennai, presently the managing partner of SPR and Co. and former Central Council member of member CA Sripriya Kumar. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, uh, yeah. Hi. So am I audible and visible? Um, you're audible and visible. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm actually at Coimbatore today, so I'm taking the call from some other place. So uh, uh, here's a very, very hearty good morning to Ramesh, sir, the chairman of the branch, uh, who's doing exemplary work, and I keep seeing it in all your posters, etc. Congratulations about your Navratna conference also. Uh, my namaskaram to Ramakrishnan, sir, who's... Uh, who's an intelligent and an intellectual chartered accountant and very, very social media savvy. It's not very usual for somebody his age to be present on Facebook and to be very active and to manage his profession, his independent directorships and his social media presence so well. So it's, it's a, a clear role model for us to follow. Gayatri, who's been very generous with her introduction, very, very well presented. Uh, here's a very, very hearty good morning to all of you at the outset. And uh, I'm very, very honored and very privileged to be presenting to the Sikasa students of Trivandrum today. I can see about 26 students and uh, uh, sir actually said, Madam, is it okay for you to address students? I said, absolutely fine. Uh, the most important thing being that a lot of what I'm saying today, you are the ones who are going to be doing it in your offices. So if you can implement it, It'll be great uh, for your principles and nothing like, you know, understanding this firsthand. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about company audits today. Are we going to talk about big, big company audits? No, we're going to talk about simple company audits of small and medium companies, which is what most of us do. 
So I'm not going to take the session for too long. It's going to be an hour, max to an hour and a quarter or something like that. I only want to explain two things to you today. One is how to approach a company audit with a checklist. So I'm going to show to you a checklist for every component of the financial statements. Uh, I'm getting some messages. What does that mean? Okay, you can continue. Uh, yeah. Please continue. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm, and uh, uh, also a very, very hearty congratulations to Franklin, sir, on completing 50 years of the profession. I assume he passed his CA before I was born. I was born in 1973. So, so um, very, thank very, you, uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, we're basically going to talk about statutory audits with checklists. So, how do you use a checklist? What are the checklists? I've made about 30 checklists for every component of the financial statements. So when I'm talking about these checklists, I'm also going to expose you to some fraud risks. Why do these fraud risks happen? They happen because today the country is very stressed. I don't know how many of you know, MCA actually struck okay. off 3 lakh companies from the rules. 3 lakh to 5 lakh companies have suffered a strike off meaning the Ministry of Companies and Affairs okay. says, Look, this is not a company as far as I am concerned. The third thing I'm going to show you, is something that would interest you very much. I'm actually doing something. It's a simple free template. You please mute uh, Franklin's answer. Okay, you can cut it. Yeah, unmute uh, you. Yeah. So the third thing I'm going to show you is a Schedule 3 template. See, technically, as an auditor, you don't prepare the template, right? Because it's supposed to be the client's role to give you a financial statement. But what I've done is I've done a Schedule 3 template using only three Excel formula. One is sum. The other one is called sum if. And the third is called absolute. Now, in order to keep this template simple, I've done it only for the balance sheet items. So, but I'm going to share it with you. And I'm sure all of you are the millennial kids. So you'll be 10 times better in Excel and technology than most of us are. So with this very short preamble, the key takeaways for you today will be three things. One is a very small overview of the statutory audit process and the risks that are embedded. The second is going to be a set of 30 checklists in Excel. I will mail it to Ramakrishnan sir and he will mail it to everybody. And the last is a very nice schedule three template that you can implement in your offices and give it to your clients. I'm now proceeding to share my screen. The first of the screens that I'm sharing with is actually a template on the statutory audit process. Statutory audits of small and medium companies along with the detailed checklists of audit programs and a schedule three template. We're going to talk about audit process. Just to make it a little more interesting, I'll talk about fraud risks also. And let's not think that frauds happen only in very large companies. They happen in very small companies. And uh, Franklin, sir, had also rightly touched upon the amendments to the Companies Act. I will be talking about those amendments also. But the amendments to Schedule 3, audit rules, and accounts rules are all effective only next year. For financial statements that you're signing this year for 2021, it's not applicable. It's applicable for financial statement periods being 21, 22. We'll talk about designing and implementing checklists and key aspects on Companies Act, Audit 2021. So very simply, what's an audit? It's the expression of a true and a fair opinion or otherwise on what? on the financial statements of an entity, whether profit-oriented or not. The audit is your responsibility as an auditor. The financial statements are the responsibility of the management. Now, what happens in a financial statement? So if you look at your standard on auditing, it very clearly says, financial statements, internal controls, etc., are the responsibility of the management. So it there's a very nice term which comes into play and it's called financial statement assertions. 
Now, what's an assertion? It's a very easy way to understand assertion. So let's assume I have a son to get married. I am the father. I am the mother of the son. So when I say, okay, my son is five feet, nine inches tall. His weight is so-and-so, so-and-so. He has studied so-and-so, so-and-so. He is or he is not a teetotaler. He is uh, working in this place. These are his qualities, etc. This is what I assert as the mother of the son who's about to be married. Now, what does the father of the bride do? He tests these assertions by talking to people, by making inquiries, etc. Right? Similarly, when we're talking about a financial statement, the management makes some assertions. For example, fixed assets in the balance sheet is 1 crore 5 lakhs 32,000. So the management says, see, 1 crore 5 lakhs 32,000 exists. That's an assertion. Rights and obligations. He says 1 crore 5 lakhs exists and all these invoices are in the name of the company. See, can I have a plant and machinery of XYZ? Wherein the invoice is in the name of the proprietor, the, the partner or the director? No, I can't, right? So these are, and he says, okay, I bought 50 lakhs worth of assets this year. The purchase occurred, etc. Now, what do you as an auditor do? You test these assertions. Now, why am I using the term assertions? Because these assertions are there in the Excel sheet that I'm giving you. And today, auditing is a profession. So can I do auditing any way I want? No, I can't. I have to abide by the standards on auditing. So the standards on auditing speak of assertions. Now, what I've basically done is the standards on auditing is an ocean. So obviously, you can't boil or churn an ocean, right? When you're doing a small or a medium company. So I've picked out the most important elements of these standards stitched it together, and I've made a checklist. So you have an assertion, then you perform. Okay, I am the father of the bride. I perform procedures, right? I'll call up a friend, a family friend and say, oh, is that boy good? That's a procedure. That's an inquiry. So I perform audit procedures. Why do I do audit procedures? Because I need audit evidence. Why do I need audit evidence? Because I'm presenting an opinion, right? Today, if I'm saying, the, 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 the data is there. I have to say, yes, the data is real. We sold something to him, which is why he's a debtor. So that's audit evidence. Now, in addition to audit evidence, uh, you have to document all your evidence in some place. That's audit documentation. And uh, now to go to the next slide. Assertions, occurrence. This purchase transaction occurred. Complete. All purchases are completely recorded. Even my goods in transit, I've recorded it correctly. I have made an entry purchases data or stock data to goods in transit correctly. Accuracy. If my sales is 50 crores, 32 lakhs, it's accurately 50 crores, 32 lakhs. If my fixed asset balance is 10 crore, 32 lakhs, it's really 10 crore, 32 lakhs because the total of my invoices are accurately adding to my fixed asset register. Cut off. Now, can I sell on March 31st? I sell 20 crores on March 31st. I slowly dispatch it in July. Is the sale complete? No. Why? The risks and rewards of ownership have not transferred to the buyer. So that's a cutoff control. Similarly, I don't have enough money in my company. March payroll. Can I pay it in May and account it in May? No, I have to accrue. So that's your cutoff. Classification. So whole lot of classification. Your schedule three says current, non-current. What is current? Current is based on the company's current operating cycle. It is not just one year or less than one. So that's current. Existence. Oh, there is an asset. It exists. Oh, very good. Let me go physically verify it. So when the management says something about a financial statement, they're saying all these are there. Occurrence is something like that is my son. Completeness, my son has a job, this is his salary. Accuracy, exactly his salary is so much. This is what he is earning. Right? So these are assertions that you test in the course of the audit. So I had assertions. Management just told me asset is there. How am I going to test? I perform audit procedures. There are broadly three kinds of audit procedures: compliance. Risk assessment and substantive. 
why am i using these terms i'm using these terms because this is what the standard says very simple you know it's like your alphabets can you challenge them you can't challenge them so your standards on auditing says there are three broad kinds of audit procedures which are compliance risk assessment and substantive procedures compliance procedure is a test of control very simple you take your client's bank statement you go back purchase requisition purchase order material was received liability accounted i made the payment i am able to trace the payment in the bank statement that's a compliance procedure substantive procedures there are only two kinds of substantive procedures all of us all our clients will have fixed asset balance and tally but the register will be sitting outside in excel this total test of balances is a substantive test test of transactions i take all 27 28 29 30 31 invoices in march i completely add i see all those invoices whether it has been dispatched whether i have given it to a transporter that's a substantive procedure test of transactions most important substantive procedure is the analytical review procedure so we always do a top down approach to audit we don't do a bottom up approach you should never go to the client and say okay give me a voucher no you say please give me your trial balance please give me your tally data then i will start the audit so a substantive procedure is also an analytical rep now see every year the audit is different but every year the audit is also the same so how do i know what i will focus on i will focus on where there are major movements so for example last last year sales was 5 crores this year sales has suddenly become 15 crores sales is very important for me because my client can simply inflate sales and go take a big bank od right i should not allow that so we need to be a little careful so those are substantive procedures this is one way of looking at the audit procedures a more real approach to looking at audit procedures will be analytical review observation of inventory being counted enquire a supplier oh i am seeing some supplier big invoice supplier phone number is there just call the supplier and check whether the supplier exists inspection security is charged inspection of property documents all this is inspection confirmation most important test why external evidence is always better than internal evidence what is confirmation bank confirmation debtor confirmation creditors confirmation okay all this is very very important let's assume your client has a dormant balance sheet that is where the risk is even more five crores is sitting on this side five crores is sitting on this side and it is sitting like that for 10 years you have to be very very careful get confirmation of balances both on your liabilities and on your assets there is a separate standard on auditing for confirmations and confirmation of balances is the easiest way to get very very good audit evidence see if most of my sales are not related party sales and i am able to get a third party confirmation debtor himself is saying yes yes i have to pay what more audit procedure do i need to perform i don't need to perform it reperformance now your client could be on a home grown erp he says okay madam when i do this transaction it is showing me this result for example if your client is on sap we say okay he says if i pass me go one transaction my stock is increasing so you tell your client okay client you put me go let me check it's called reperformance recomputation all our clients are maintaining fixed asset register in excel they are calculating the depreciation in excel so you tell the client okay client you give me the fixed asset register you delete all the columns you put the depreciation calculation afresh that is recomputation all these audit procedures necessarily need to feature in your working papers very very important now you may ask okay i'm signing a balance sheet what should i do now the most important thing is if everything is fine there is no issue but when something goes wrong your papers are called you are called there's a challenge now i always like to say this between diligence and negligence it's like on thin coin diligence means as an auditor you've done your job well negligence means you've not done it well 
what is the rim? A coin can fall this side or that side, right? What's the rim? The rim is your working papers. They should speak. That is why you need to have working papers. Another very important thing is, see, you audit under GAP, which is generally accepted auditing principles. It allows you the benefit of test check. So tomorrow, if you're saying everything is okay, how are you saying everything is okay? You're saying everything is okay based on the sample verified by you. Hence, you need to document that sample because tomorrow nobody can say you didn't do your job, right? Now, I've prepared these checklists. And I sort of very felt a little compelled to say, okay, Sri Priya, you're saying you're, everybody has to follow a checklist for audit. I tried to convince myself. I said, why do I need a checklist here? Correct. You can't simply, you don't bake a road because you love the road, right? There has to be a reason for that road to be there. So why? The first one is efficient audit. See, audit, there is something called audit risk. So let me step one back. What is true and fair? True and fair is only two things. One, that your financial statement signed by you as the auditor is free from material misstatement. That is the first component of true and fair. And the second component of true and fair is that your financial statements have been prepared in accordance with the applicable reporting framework, which is Schedule 3. Schedule 3 is the minimum. If you have share application money pending allotment, you should disclose it the way Schedule 3 wants you to disclose it. Greater than 180 days, lesser than 180 days, you should disclose it. Shareholders holding more than 5%, you should disclose. If you want to disclose every shareholder, that is fine. No problem. You go ahead and do it. But Schedule 3 is the minimum disclosure. So what is an audit risk? Audit risk is that your audit has failed to detect a material mistake. So when I have a checklist, I know, oh, okay, okay, I have to get a confirmation of balance. I get a very powerful audit procedure. Next is, that's an effective audit to obtain the best possible evidence at the shortest possible time. Efficient audit. See, all of us know for our principles, nobody gives you a fee for the number of days you audit. They say, this is the total fee, you please audit within this. That's an efficient audit. I need to do my audit in the shortest possible time. Complex requirement. Today, this is another thing I like to keep telling people. See, your client has a choice. He can be a proprietor. He can be a partner. He can be an AOP. He can be a BOI. He can be a trust. He can be a cooperative society. That's, the, that's what the constitution tells you. You can do it any way you want. But if you choose to be a company, you have to follow the Companies Act and the relevant schedules. The requirements have become very, very complex. So, for example, you need to disclose pen pending material litigation. You need to disclose so, so many things. So, how will I remember? I need to put it in a checklist. Standardized work. So, whether A does it or B does it, a firm needs to have some amount of standardization. And in the place where I did my articles, it was very, very comfortable. The first year articles would do share, uh, you know, uh, share capital, cash and bank and all that. Second year articles will do fixed assets, revenues, etc. Third year articles only will do inventories. But how would I do? I'll take my last year's working paper. And from there on, I will build my current year's working paper. So it gives you something called a cake. What's cake? Cumulative audit knowledge. And the most an important compelling reason is audit evidence, audit documentation. And we come back to the same thing, standards on auditing. Now, I have done some checklists, which is right from the beginning, before you take a client, to all categories of checklists, I have finished. So this is my preamble to my presentation, which is taken us at about a half an hour now. I will actually show you about four or five checklists, and I'm not going to show you everything. But before we move into the checklists, Let's talk about what are the most important aspects of company audit. Your, you as an auditor should not be disqualified. You should not be a shareholder in the company. You should not be a relative of a KMP. There are Companies Act restrictions on your being an auditor. Audit term, you're allowed a term 
only for certain categories of companies rotation applies so if we are coming under rotation we need to resign we should not take up the audit third most important under section 144 of the companies act as the auditor you should not have prepared done the following services it is called restricted services accounting bookkeeping payroll processing mis design share valuation all that you should not do if you do you can't be the statutory auditor so you have to make sure that the restricted services there is no bar when i first start an audit i have to issue an engagement letter to the client very very important do i have to invent a format no i don't have to why because institute guidance note gives me a very very good format that i should sign as a chartered accountant and get the client to counter sign internal audit so even very interesting thing is on march 24th 2021 they made huge changes there was a change in the accounts rules there was a change in the auditors rules and there was a huge change in schedule 3 and that's applicable only for next year but this year itself it's very very important for our clients to understand what is the new schedule 3 because in the new schedule 3 a lot of you also have to prepare last year's comparatives correct so when i'm bringing a new schedule 3 i have to put last year numbers also right let me give you some examples of what all the new schedule 3 wants you to do one it wants your client to disclose all transactions with strike off companies why so many of our clients will have suppliers or customers who are all struck off it's very very important they want you to disclose default willful defaulters they want you to tell whether your client has an internal audit see as per the companies act only certain categories of companies need to have mandatory internal audit but if you read caro it is for all companies for which caro is applicable you need to have an internal audit so for 21 22 ideally your client should be having a proper system of internal audit then only when you are signing the financial statement for 21 22 you can give a positive view on the matter caro applicability please be very very careful if whether the client that you are auditing comes under caro applicability a very simple way to do all this is you please go to the mca website mca.gov.in there is a very very nice ebook on the companies act you go to that ebook you open a section it will give you the rules along with that section it becomes very 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 simple so um close the door becomes very simple for you to understand the act and the rules together so caro applicability which are the enterprises for which caro applies you have to sign so most of us would know what is my total audit financial statements means what that's defined in the companies act it means balance sheet p and l cash flow statement of changes in equity if any you have a uh, uh, main audit report caro icofer notes and accounts all this is your financial statements and audit report and board report very important all of this has to talk to each other caro applicability ifc wherever so what is ifc it's very very simple see there was a huge organization called enron that collapsed in the us if you haven't read it please go to google and read it it's like one of the scams that shook the world and there was a lot of auditor involvement etc and a huge audit firm called anderson collapsed now until enron happened everybody said statutory auditor you be bothered only about output financial statement right there is an input there is a process and an output but after enron happened they caught in something called as the sarbanes oxley in the us sox it's called sox act He said, "I'm not only bothered about the output; I'm also bothered about the process that results in the output." So every company will have risks, right? How do you mitigate risks by putting controls? So after SOX came in the US, they said auditors' responsibility is also to evaluate controls. Huge change. Now, just as how Enron made changes in the world, 
this companies act is always called as the 3s act three scams satyam sharada sahara these three scams decisively influenced the way the companies act 2013 was written and it's in that context that we started doing icofer what does icofer do it's very simply the management is supposed to say i have controls controls are working effectively what does auditor do i test management controls and i say okay okay everything is okay or not okay small companies so this companies act is a very strange act why is it a very strange act because they said certain provisions will apply only for certain classes of companies completely difficult to understand some categories of companies independent directors which class of companies will have women directors which class of company needs to have audit committee which class of company needs to have kmp which class of company needs to have internal auditor which class of companies should have rotation which class of companies csr will apply which class of companies needs to do cash flow statements right? which class of companies are not included in calculating 20 limit of companies under the companies act all over the place small companies one such thing which class of companies caro will apply which class of companies icofer will apply right it's it's very very difficult so similarly cash flow statements uh, it's not applicable for certain categories of companies but i feel as auditors we should prepare cash flow for everything because a cash flow tells you a lot more that your pnl doesn't tell you so certain classes of companies when their when their investment income becomes more than their operating income they sort of become nbfcs i am not an expert on this but there is a particular provision that you watch out for those things will come out in the cash flow better share application money pending allotment just a small example depreciation deferred taxation loan from members loan to directors no no never give section 185 says loan to director or his relative nobody should give but if it's to a person in whom the director is interested the company by a special resolution and some other conditions can give a loan loan from members now this companies act also made it very very difficult for companies to raise funds previously you know what they used to do they will call somebody give him one share and then they will take a fixed deposit from him then the company will shut down and run away they said oh i'm taking money only from a shareholder so it's okay so this company said said no boss you can't take money from a shareholder also above a certain amount you take you take money i will classify it as a deposit that's all you want money you take money but i will call it as a deposit and if i call it as a deposit the government says see that poor man is putting money in your company by whatever name it is called i am calling it as a deposit please get one credit rating them please have a deposit insurance these are so today money received by a company can become a deposit in which case the company needs to have credit rating etc the law wants to protect the depositors interest in these matters i'm so sorry huh? i mean just a lot of uh, pets around the place and they're all singing in chorus also. uh trade advances received a client cannot receive trade advance for more than 365 days then it becomes a deposit see some people will get very smart no some person is there they'll take money from him as a trade advance he'll keep sitting in my books for 3 4 years so quiet way no but i have to finally repay it to him but then they'll shut shop and go away so they said no you can't have trade advances for more than 365 days so these are the important matters of emphasis audit report format has to be correct fraud reporting see please read 143 very very carefully in fact from 139 please read it extremely carefully because all these provisions are very very important now 139 to 143 are my primary contents of audit functions 143 one says oh please do enquiries you know 
personal expenses should not be debited to revenue shares which are allotted for cash cash should have come into the company 14312 speaks about fraud report very very important it's made it mandatory on the auditor that is now getting reflected in the new schedule 3 also so everything today if you look at audit report plus icofer plus caro plus new schedule 3 there is not a single pointed question to which an auditor is not giving an answer they have made schedule 3 and caro very 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 complicated management representation letter that's a, like you start the audit with an engagement letter you end the audit with a management representation letter going concern reporting very very important this year so many of our clients are doing badly because of covid is there a going concern risk that i need to protect Yes, I do. How am I going to manage it? SA, AS, and Schedule Three compliances very important. You have to comply with Schedule Three. So there is a very nice guidance note which has been issued by the Institute in August in two thousand nineteen. Please go through the guidance note. In Schedule Three, there are three very important parts to that guidance note. The first part is it says what are the general principles of Schedule. Three? it will say this is the minimum if you want to give additional disclosure you give but please don't make it too crowded the second part of the guidance note will give illustrations they'll say this is the circumstance how should i disclose the third part of the guidance note goes category by category it says share capital how should i show reserves and surplus how should i show loans how should i show every component of the balance sheet and pnl it says how should i show so please go through the schedule 3 guidance note and again i'll tell you what's the pain point here whether you are doing one company or 10 companies you still have to read everything which is why i always tell chartered accountants don't do just one audit just go out into the market and see if you can get more audits because anyway i have to learn everything so i might as well do 10 20 30 companies companies amendment act the slightly respond important but one good thing about this companies act is see they always keep saying no other than the hammurabi code of law and perhaps your uh, uh, you know the the banuspriti or something like that there is no act in history which is proactive all legislations in history are reactive satyam sharda sahara companies act ILFS, additional disclosures, changes to Schedule Three, Enron, SOX, collective Ponzi schemes. You know, people will take money from somebody. Using that money, they will pay interest to somebody else at twenty four, thirty, forty percent, and the scheme will just keep on going until one day they will not be able to pay. Ponzi scheme, severe regulation scheme. so every time civil society misbehaved there was a new act there were additional penalties today companies act strike off for example happened so there is a new change in your new schedule 3 you have to show how much money i got from strike off companies how much money have i given to strike off companies etc so the most important thing is this year when you do your statutory audits please remember there is a huge overhang what is the overhang first of all the economy is super stressed because of corona two it's not that the bankers are doing a free dole and doling out money no credit is still evaluated the bankers are also scared now third important thing but 2500 companies have got admitted into insolvency process people are seeing what is going wrong why did this company fail was it a financial failure was it a business failure he started a hotel and the hotel didn't take off or is it promoter malfeasance is there diversion of funds is there round tripping these 2500 companies have opened the regulators eyes to what all can possibly go wrong and the banks are also getting a lot more scared and nervous these are and then of course uh, the financial stress in the economy Uh, and the uh, uh, ibc is i think a very important uh, uh, aspect all these have what does this mean 
it simply means your audit risk is higher what is audit risk audit risk is that you as an auditor have failed to detect a material misstatement so today 5000 rupees is not passed in entry forget it let him pass it next year look at the big picture did the sales really happen did the collections really come in did the purchase really happen was the, that vendor a genuine vendor or is just booking a bill please be very very careful now i walk you to the second part of my presentation which is the checklist that i have done are you able to see my screen yes ma'am yes so i am not going to show you all the checklists because today is also a saturday and i'm sure it's your day off and i don't want to keep you away from your lunch and but i'm going to show you how i have structured these checklists and i will show you only three examples the remaining is all readable okay now if you go to a checklist all the checklists have something very very common okay how do you audit you audit components so first is a component example fixed assets within a component there'll be a process right for even a human there's a process i am born then i walk then i talk then i go to school i finish my 10th standard i finish my 12th standard i finish my graduation i finish my ca i get married i get into a job i have children i age right these are processes similarly every component will have processes in a fixed asset what can be a process addition deletion fixed asset register control custody of fixed assets movement of fixed assets it can go from one one factory to another factory correct physical verification idle assets impairment correct so these are all processes now all these processes have to be robust for my financial statements to be accurate correct addition means i have to add correctly i have to capitalize correctly right each process will have a risk for example let's take in fixed assets depreciation is a very important process depreciation not calculated correctly is a risk but management says no no madam we put it in excel if you calculating properly you can go put your filters and check so there is a calculation what is the assertion management is saying management is saying depreciation has been completely provided and accurately provided as per the act as an auditor what test you perform i will do recomputation why my client has kept it in excel i'll give you a small example i have seen ever so many excel calculations where the cost of the asset is 100 depreciation is 120 and it will show a minus balance why because somebody forgot to stop the depreciation at 95% normally that's what we do right we depreciate up to 95% assuming that there is a salvage value of 5% this i will check and then my opinion i will give i'll say yes yes boss your fixed asset depreciation is correct or it is not correct you pass this entry he says madam i can't pass this entry you will qualify it this is the same logical order i have followed for every component now the first six statements i'm going to just tell you what it is acceptance checklist today a bank has a kyc similarly we also have to have a kyc i need to know whether my client is risky or not are there pmla cases against them are there enforcement issues what is the problem is there a risk associated with my client similarly if you're continuing with the same client now all this comes in see there's something called sqc1 in your standards and auditing they're all very very important you don't have to do the whole hog but you have to do something that's important continuance checklist as an auditor you required to give your consent then you have an engagement letter this is a must tomorrow if there is an issue in any of your audits people would obviously start with this 
This is an engagement letter format. All you have to do is go click here. It will take you to the relevant engagement letter template. Where is this coming from? This is coming from standard on auditing. Right? This is an example of an engagement letter where ICOFR reporting is applicable. Then you go to this where ICOFR reporting is not applicable. You can click. All your principal would have to do is just sign and execute. Now, when an auditor changes, there's something on professional ethics, correct? We don't want to take somebody else's audit unless they have consented. So you get an NOC. So I've made an NOC format. Now I've taken a new client. Do I just go run, jump in and start doing an audit? No, I don't. Why? Because as an auditor, I should ensure that there are that your financial statements are free from material mistakes. How do I do that? First, I will say, okay, let me understand your business. What business are you doing? Oh, you're a notebook distributor. Okay, if you're a notebook distributor, your bulk of your sales will be happening only during the school season. So March, April, May, June, July will be 90% sales. Okay, no problem. Now I will start your audit. Some understanding. How many factories are there? How many warehouses? Oh, I have to go here to do the inventory verification. Very good. So I understand my client's business. I tell them, what are all the important acts, sir, for you? Companies act, okay. Income tax, okay. GST, yes. Oh, you're importing. Then customs also will be applicable. Okay, sir, you have IEC code. Okay, great. So it helps you to build a perspective on a client. That's understanding the client's business, their internal controls, who are their main customers, who are their main competitors, what is the business process, all this affects your financial statement from outside. It creates a risk of material misstatement that you need to guard yourself against. Then you prepare a planning memorandum. Why do I need to plan? See, fix it as it's not much movement. So I'll finish off in two days. Sales, huge change. I want to do for five days. I need to plan my work, right? So for example, let me give you a very small example. You're having a wedding in the family. You're having a birthday function in the family. Will you prepare the same level for both these functions? You won't, right? If it's a birthday, I'll just call a small caterer. Okay, a little bit. I'll we'll do the decorations ourselves. We'll finish it off, right? That's your birthday preparation memorandum. In your birthday preparation memorandum, what will you have? You'll have cake. You'll have return gifts. You'll have new dress. You'll have minimal decoration. right? And you'll have lunch or dinner, whatever. Number of persons, 20 finished. When you're doing a wedding checklist, what will you do? You'll start an invitation. How many to be personally? How many to send over post? How many will come because of this COVID? Who's going to be the caterer? How many course meal am I going to have? Which is the venue? Am I going to have all my functions in one venue or in multiple venues? Planning. Similarly, in an audit, there is an audit planning memorandum. Why do I know they need an APM? Because it helps me to do an efficient and effective audit. That's one. But the standard on auditing wants you to do it. That's the most important thing. And today, as an auditor, you have to audit as per the essays. Now, I walked you through this part, which is how I have constructed the component-wise checklists. Now, for fixed assets, I will have overall procedures, additions, Obtain the total list of additions. For sample of additions, check original invoice, capitalized. Has the asset come into the factory, etc., etc. Deletions, personal and revenue expenditure, physical verification, idle unutilized assets, control over asset movements, depreciation, fixed assets register, Revaluation. So in your client, revaluation must might not have happened. So what will you write? You will just say, finish. Now the best part is, what is the easiest thing? I will print nine, just this one page. Whatever you are documenting, you keep it as 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, 9.4, 9.5, 9.6, up to 9.99. You can have how many ever pages you want. 
that becomes your audit document. If 9 is my fixed assets program, 9.1 will always be my block schedule. Correct? You're putting a block schedule in the financials, that should be there. 9.2 will be the tally, just the tally accounts. Why? Because you must tell your principal, no? Sir, tally's total is equal to block schedule total. 9.3 fixed asset register. My client itself has only one page fixed asset register. Print it and keep it. If client has many, many records of fixed assets, make a summary. Category wise or something wise summary you put and say, sir, I have taken a summary of the fixed asset register in one page. Total is tally. Your boss feels very happy because you've done everything. Correct? Or 9.1, 9.2, 9.3. Now what will happen? Next year your junior is going to do it. Your junior will also keep the same thing. He'll say, okay, okay, 9.1, I should keep this. So it builds. It builds your cumulative knowledge. Revaluation, title and insurance, special categories of assets. See, sometimes your client will buy asset on EPCG. I won't pay duty, but I'll say, okay, I'll export. For that, there is a contingent liability disclosure. Right? Similarly, deferred taxation becomes very important. Capital work in progress. I must tell you this capital work in progress story. The new Schedule 3 makes financial reporting sound like management reporting. In my old Schedule 3, which is until this year, I only had to give CWIP. Now I have to do CWIP, aging of CWIP, suspended projects, cost overrun, time over. Five new components Hello. have been introduced. There we go. So this is an example of fixed assets. Now, what have I given? I had explained to you, right? This is the component. Correct? These are my assertions. These are my risks. I have written the risk positively. Not capitalized properly is the risk. Instead, I've said capitalized on the date book to use. So risk. Control is what the management has put in. And the testing of the control is what you do here. Work paper reference. Exceptions. It's done. Similarly, let me run you. These are all fixed assets related. I've kept template for re-performance. Inventories. In inventories, what would be there? I would have overall procedures. What is my first overall procedure? My first overall procedure is last year's balance and this year's balance should tally my opening balance. My last year's trial balance should tally to this year's trial balance. These are my first procedures. Then control over receipts, control over issues, inventory custody, inventory ledgers, Inventory write-offs and adjustments, inventory verification, inventory valuation, inventory provisions for slow-moving, non-moving inventory, etc. So each of these audit programs is precisely made in the same manner. Cash. Cash is very simple. Cash overall procedures, cash receipt, cash payment, cash custody, cash insurance. Cash verification. A lot of these audit programs can also be used for internal audit. And it's not necessary that it should be used only for statutory audits. Similarly, share capital. Movements of share capital. Now, let me quickly tell you, component-wise, what all you should be careful. Share capital. See, your client company has two shareholders. Okay. Now, in the process, you find that one of the companies, one of the shareholders itself is struck off because they did not file their annual returns. Can you have a company with only one, one shareholder? You can't. The very legal vehicle has been impaired. Second most important thing, directors are signing the financial statements, correct? India is a land of namesake directors. There will be one promoter, then two of his direct drivers will be directors. You as an auditor are signing the financial statement. Know your director. 
tomorrow if these financial statements are challenged in a court of law and the director comes and says sir i don't know i know only malayalam i don't know what i signed you have a problem and as an auditor is it not a fundamental respect that one director should come and sit in front of you please be very careful similarly investments your client has made 10 crores investment somewhere look at it logically can i have a situation where i am not getting any dividend i am not even getting agm notice although i am a shareholder that the investment value is also not going up so what does that mean my client is used as a conduit to root transactions that is not good that's not what this country wants please be very careful similarly revenue overstatement i book a lot of sales in march and everything becomes sales return in april possible very much possible check for it purchases purchases returns now they say okay unbilled revenue what is this i don't understand i have not yet finished my work but i am billing unbilled revenue unbilled revenue is not wrong but 3 years i have unbilled revenue of 10 crores in the fourth year i write off unbilled revenue see as an auditor i am very happy client puts provision for bad debt i am like oh great he's made a provision no that's not important why is he making the provision for bad debt is it possible that my customer has paid my promoter directly without bringing money into the company is the banker impaired these are the kind of questions that your mind has to start evolving and evoking this particular year when you are doing the audit so similarly i have kept templates for secured loans unsecured loans current liabilities provision for taxation payroll routine expenses electricity rent etc now in this whole concept of audit okay you have something called as materiality am i going to check every voucher no i won't i will decide up to 20000 rupees 10000 rupees 5000 rupees i don't want to check i don't need to do a 100% audit because my client has good controls i don't want to do so much audit i'll do only this much audit and i will conclude so with this i'm closing the second part of my presentation unless there are any specific questions and i'd like to just give a short window for some questions any questions please you can ask your questions through chat yeah you can yes please does anyone have yeah so are there any questions if not i'd like to proceed to the second part of my presentation okay okay which is on my schedule 3 format ma'am one, one question ma'am yes sir you said uh, uh, the portion for bad debts is made the auditor has to inquire whether the client has made the payment directly to the promoters or directors how to uh, verify that Uh, uh basically a third party confirmation sir okay now also look at one more thing sir i have sold goods for 1 crore to somebody okay he has not paid the money after 2 years will i quietly put a provision won't i at least write four letters to him asking for the payment mm -hmm. would i not take the material back right. would i not give one low cost legal notice yeah nothing could have been done these are circumstances which point to frauds one has okay. to be able to be careful okay understand okay ma'am yes sir so i have basically made out a very simple schedule 3 template only for one component i mean i have done only balance sheet as an illustration but i just thought it since it's a young crowd they would be interested i am going to show you how i have configured this so what are the broad steps involved are uh, you able to see my screen no ma'am yeah now i'm showing you the indicative template so the first step 
is create BS template. Right? All of us know. This is my top sheet, right? Of the balance sheet. So I create a template without any numbers. This is how a Schedule 3 template is expected to look. Second, I create a PNL template. Correct? Now, we all know the balance sheet, you don't take it directly from the trial balance, right? So, we create BS schedules. So, for example, these are my balance sheet schedules, right? Yes. Long-term borrowings, short-term borrowings, reserves and surplus, etc. That is my third step. Then my fourth step is I create PL schedules. Very happy. Five. I download trial balance. Six. In TB, you mark the schedule three reference as per BSN PL schedule. I'll come back to you on this. Seventh is in TB, create net transaction value. In TB, create absolute value. Link TB to schedules using some if formula. That's all you will do. I will show you how to do it. Now we came till here, right? I have hidden the profit and loss schedules, but let it be there. So I finished this. I have created the PL template. I have created the PS schedule and the PS, PL schedule. Now, for a moment, these only for balance sheet, I'm showing you the illustration. I brought a trial balance. In my trial balance, I would have had only four columns, right? What is the head of account? How much is the debit? How much is the credit? And it is the total. Correct? I had only these four. Capital, debit, credit. Now I create a net. Net is nothing but debit minus credit. Correct? And I copy the formula right down to the end of my trial balance. Now in this trial balance, if you notice, because I didn't want it to become very long, p and is still just one item. It has already been rolled up. So you don't have salaries, wages and all that. I've just given an example here. Right? No, I told you we are going to only use three formulae. Correct? What are the three formulae? My first formulae was sum, which all of us know. Correct? One, two, three, four, five. All of us are very familiar. Is equal to sum this to this. Very simple formulae. Correct? The second formula is called absolute value. Very, very easy. Now, I had debit, I had credit, I had net, right? So, I had 100, 200, 300. For my credit items, it will be 200, 500, 600. So I had four debits and three credits and my trial balance tallied. Now I told you, right, you have to bring the net amounts. Because when I'm picking up the data, I don't want to pick up debit separately, credit separately. So I say, okay, please give me the debt. This is nothing but <laughs> this. What will the net total be? Zero. Correct? Now, if I pick up these numbers to the balance sheet, 
won't it give me minus 200 and all sitting in my balance sheet but in balance sheet we present all the numbers only in absolute value correct so i use a very simple formula called absolute value which is nothing but is equal to abs of 100 If the number is already positive, it will return a positive. But if the number is negative, it will again return a positive. Got it? Absolute value of a negative number is the number itself. Absolute value of a positive number is the positive number itself. So what will this total be? It will be two times. Correct? Thousand three hundred plus thousand three hundred. Now I go to the trial balance. i apply whatever we learned to the trial balance my debit minus credit is the net is equal to absolute value of my net absolute value is this plus this correct now i finished that also now every item in the trial balance has to go somewhere in the schedule correct correct so for example bank term loan 1 bank term loan 2 how does schedule 3 want you to call it in schedule 3 disclosure it is called term loans from banks correct so when i put my liability here i have shown term loan from banks so at the outset all these items were blank there was nothing here correct okay? when i first created a template it was a blank template now what do i do this is an indicative schedule 3 now schedule 3 says for long term borrowings tell me is it from bank related parties others and these classifications all you have to do is go to term loan from bank copy it go to the trial balance and give this name here so in my trial balance i am telling my trial balance every line where you should go and sit in your schedule 3 then we come to the last formula which is your sum if now let us assume this is 10 standard this boy is 11 standard this is 12 standard so let's say these three people pay 1000 rupees fees these three people pay 2000 rupees fees these three people pay 3000 rupees fees just one minute Mr. Manju, I just call you back. Hello, I just call you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Nine students are there. Okay. Now, I want to summarize. Ten standard. How much is the money we collected? I can go here. Put plus. put plus put plus correct similarly 11 standard it will be this 12 standard it will be this correct just for a variance let me give some different numbers so my total fees of 19000 this is how i collected now i find this very cumbersome so i'm using a formula called sum if where i say i want to find out 10 standard 11 standard 12 standard how much is the sum i'll say is equal to sum if open bracket in my class if it is 10 standard then total this got it similarly is equal to sum if open bracket 
this to this is 11th standard sum this is equal to sum if this to this the range to be summed is 12th standard then sum if so using a sum if formula i have got the same 19000 rupees by class so you will have to experience this template i'm just showing you because i'm sure you'll be able to grasp it similarly now when i'm coming to term loan from banks i'm doing something very simple <laughs> i'm saying is equal to sum if so let's assume all this was a blank is equal to sum if in my trial balance if my grouping which is this whole column is saying it is a term loan from bank then please summarize for me my absolute value see it is automatically started summarizing similarly if the sum is from advance from related party please give it to me from my trial balance other loans and advances please give it to me from my trial balance there is only one limitation in this process instead of calling it as term loans from banks here if you go and put term loans from banks full stop it will not pick up here because it is a syntax issue see it is saying there is no term loan from banks because you have given it as term loans from banks full stop okay so this template again i will share this with you for your comfort and convenience it's a very simple template all you need to do is use your schedule 3 however you do the mapping and the best advantage is once you do it it will be the same thing for every year so i presume i have finished my presentation within the allotted time so if you have any questions i'll be very happy to take it and this is the the structure of the presentation thank you very much thank you sir any questions you yeah, ma'am please uh, if anyone have any questions please ask us through chat So, Franklin, sir, you want to say something? Information. Yes. Title dates of immovable property not held in the name of the company. Then there is one Benami. Benami uh, disclosure with respect to Benami property held. And the borrowing from banks not used for the purpose of the. Purpose for which it was taken. Uh, that is diversity, uh, deviation, uh, diversification of funds. That's so all to be reported. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It needs to be reported. Uh, so, uh, currently, short-term funds used for long-term purposes is coming in caro. In next year's Schedule Three, there is a very specific question: whether loans have been utilized for the purposes for which they have been obtained, which is a much larger question. This immovable property not held in the name of the company, maybe the director's name with the resolution, the vehicles and all such things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But they, specifically, they are asking only for title deeds of assets not held yes, in the name of the company. Immovable property, sir. Only immovable property. Something else, material, then it can't can't be capitalized in the books at all, sir. Only in case of title deeds, it's possible where your you have acquired the company through a share transfer process. The original title deeds will be in the name of the company, whereas the shares. is what you have acquired you will only make the mutation in the a register so those kind of cases the title deeds which are not held in the name of the company is possible sir but things like cars etc if it's held in the name yeah, of the company that is movable that is movable so yeah so the rest of the binami property held yes sir so uh, that's the other new change now so they are talking a lot about who is the ultimate beneficiary sir There have been. Uh, this is a very specific requirement. They are only talking about. We cannot property. have any binami property, no. Yes, sir. So that's why they have said where any proceedings have been in, in, uh, done only. They have done. 
so but for this binami they brought in two more line two more uh, changes sir in the next schedule they are talking about where funds have been given to intermediaries but i am the ultimate beneficiary or i have received the money for somebody else's benefit i am supposed to disclose sir in the new schedule 3 very specifically and the auditor has to certify sir now they have moved to asking very very pointed questions sir that's the change disclosure of utilization of borrowed funds and share premium yes sir so they are saying how have you used it so they are asking very specific questions today at the share premium how it is arrived all those things here so share premium so there are two parts to it so you have issued your shares at a premium so it has to be through a logical valuation process and uh, the valuation cannot be done by our own statutory auditor so somebody independent should have valued before that investor comes to invest of course there is no valuation requirement for a rights issue uh, but for any other where there is a relinquishment etc then the valuation becomes important so that's that's how it works sir so they are saying if that is especially when you are going for an ipo etc and if you have said okay i am going to go build this factory i am going to use it for this you should use it for the same purpose for which it's intended okay thank you very good yes, presentation thank you sir thank you very very much thank you ma'am thank you so thanks, much thanks thank you so much guys thank you for a wonderful session ramakrishnan sir and shivram sir thank you very much sir thanks welcome yeah i now invite advait umesh our program coordinator to deliver word of thanks good afternoon everyone just a, just a second uh, i will appeal to all the students to attend the tomorrow's independence day flag hoisting ceremony at our institute please do attend thank you okay you can proceed so what up good afternoon everyone on behalf of sikas at ravandram i would like to extend my sincere gratitude to ca franklin for sharing his experience and for his contribution to our prestigious profession next i would like to thank ca sripriya kumar for sharing her insights on company audit next i would like to extend my sincere gratitude to our branch chairman ca ramesh kumar and our sikasa chairman ca ramakrishnan for his immense support last but never the least i would like to thank the sikasa committee for organizing this wonderful webinar thank you thank you very much yes. Okay, thank you once again. I thank all of you who took part in this event. Follow our Instagram page to know more about such events. Thank you.